Every day of my life, I approach it with a state of empathy, right? Regardless of what color, what creed, what race you are, I look at people as human beings. I think that's important. But life is always about taking a stand and holding principles. So I want to explain what I feel like my stance is as a black male in this world, okay? And conversations that I've had with my brothers and sisters in the black community. And I want you guys to empathize with it and hear me on it. So when I hear what Kyrie Irving has to go through in order to be reinstated, I'm appalled. I'm appalled. And let me give you examples of how I feel like we don't have the same energy and hold other people who have dealt with racial tropes accountable. So when Sarah Silverman does blackface or when Don Imus says nappy headed hoes or when Howard Stern calls somebody the N word in the skit or when Brett Favre takes money from the state of Mississippi, we don't ask them to get sensitivity training. We don't ask them to donate $500,000. We don't ask them to meet with the Black National Caucus. They apologize. And then you know what? The rest of the world moves on. But what I feel like is happening here, and that's how in the Black community, like we've been told that's how the process works, right? Think about that, Bert. That's how the process works. Oh, somebody does a blackface. Oh, it was a misunderstanding. We got it. Okay. You know, is that person really racist? Probably not. Was it ignorant? Probably so. Okay. We understand it. We move forward. We don't like it. We would love to hold them accountable. But society and having a lot of black people in positions of power, we don't have the governability to do that. But what we feel like happens with Kyrie is even after an apology, it's not enough. We feel like there needs to be more. And a lot of people I've spoken to over the last couple of days talk about this thing, older mentors of mine talk about buck breaking. And so we talk about tropes. This is something that we feel like in the black community that happened way back in the day where if there was a slave that was defiant, right? He got broken in front of everybody in order to show that he was not in a position of power. And that at the end of the day, he had to do what he was told to do because that's what was mandated of him. And there's a bigger situation going on. With what's happening with Kyrie Irving? If the Nets don't want him to be there, just say you don't want him to be there. But we should hold everybody accountable, even owners of teams accountable with things that are happening in other countries, i.e. China and Uyghurs and the Muslim genocide that is occurring that we hear Ennis Cantor talk about. But we don't keep the same energy for everybody. We pick and choose what conversational points we want to make more polarizing. And I might lose my job. I might lose deal opportunities in the future for speaking out about even the platforms that continue to promote and profit a movie that is considered anti-Semitic to billions of people. They don't have to be accountable. Who is accountable? But we're going to put everything on the shoulders of Kyrie Irving, who, even though he said, I cannot be anti-Semitic, because if I know where I came from, stating that he's one of the four lost tribes. He's saying that blacks and Jews come from the same entity, the same thing. But we don't want to understand nuance. We want to be triggered by words. And we like fire. And we like things that are, you know, going viral on social media. And everybody has some kind of hot take. And we're calling people idiots. And we're calling people names because that's, that's what we do. We just destroy each other. I ain't going to destroy each other, man. I'm not going to do that. Is Kyrie Irving anti-Semitic? Hell no. Could he have gone about it maybe a different way? That's what I would have advised him to do. But I'm not going to let you guys sit out here and make this dude out to be like he is a villain, like he is a bad person. He is looking to explore his heritage. Now, you can crucify me if you want. I don't give a damn anymore. It's time for people to start speaking out with nuance and speaking out on the principles they stand for. That's all I'll say.